Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and the long-awaited day has finally come because the M2 MacBook Air is finally here. And I have been looking forward to this redesign of the MacBook Air for quite some time, but there is a lot of questions swirling right now, particularly with this base model M2 MacBook Air, because I believe a lot of the reviewers, uh, Apple sent them a higher spec version of the MacBook Air. So there's a lot of questions on just how well does this base model perform, especially things like the uh, potential slower disk speed, which we've been hearing a lot about, and then also how well that eight core GPU performs, especially when you pit it against the entry level M1 MacBook Air, which Apple still sells for $200 cheaper uh, than this new M2 MacBook Air. So for this video, I wanna go through uh, a lot of benchmarks, see how well the M2 MacBook Air performs, and also pit it against the M1 MacBook Air to see how much of a performance improvement you're really getting here. But because this is a new design, the first thing I want to do is unbox it because I have not had any hands on time with this MacBook Air yet. And as you can see, the box itself looks cool. I mean, it's got a profile view of the MacBook Air showing you how thin it is. And this is supposed to be one of Apple's thinnest laptops yet. Uh, you can see I got it in the brand new midnight color. Uh, really excited to check that color out. So as you open up the box, you can see that we are greeted with that MacBook Air, but let's go ahead and put that to the side a little bit to see what else we get in the box. You can see that there is a new charging cable. So now we have a braided cable that has a USB-C connector on one end and then a MagSafe connection on the other end. That's because the new M2 MacBook Air has a brand new port on it compared to the M1 Air with a magnetic charging cable. The new M2 MacBook Air obviously comes with color matching stickers. So if you get the midnight version, you're gonna get a matching color set of these midnight Apple stickers, which look very dark navy blue. And then the other thing you'll find in this box is the charging brick. Now this is the base model. So Apple is kind of being a little cheap here by only including a regular 30 watt USB-C power adapter if you order a higher end version of this MacBook Air you can actually get the dual USB-C port charger included for free or a fast 67 watt charger and let's go back and look at the MacBook Air itself I mean that's why you're here so you can see that this is a really dark color especially on camera it's showing off probably uh, darker than it would look in person but it is a really nice blend of uh, a really dark almost black color with a subtle hint of blue. Very navy blue, but just like a little bit extra dark. So in some lighting scenarios, it looks black, uh, but in other lighting scenarios, it looks like a very deep navy blue. If you compare it directly against the old M1 MacBook Air, you can see that uh, it has a new design when you open it up too. So you get a bigger size row of function keys. You also don't have speaker grills on the side anymore. The speaker's actually going to come through the keyboard now. And you'll also obviously notice that the bezels have been reduced. So now you kind of get a very similar design to the M1 Pro 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, and it has a notch on the top of the display. First impressions, I really like the design, but this video is more about the benchmarking aspect of this. We're gonna have a lot of M2 MacBook Air videos coming out, so, so don't worry about that. I'll, I'll cover that more in the future, cover the speakers, cover the webcam display, all that good stuff. But for this video specifically, I really wanna see the performance of the M2 chip in this thin fanless design. So let's go ahead and run through our usual set of benchmarks and we're gonna start off with Geekbench. So Geekbench is a very simple benchmark. It doesn't take that long to complete. So we're not gonna see any thermal throttling here, which is something I wanna test with the M2 MacBook Air, but this gives us a nice cross-platform benchmark to compare some simple numbers to. So if we compare it against the M1 MacBook Air, you can see we're getting quite a performance boost in single core and multi-core performance. Uh, the M2 Air gets 1934 on the single core and 8,945 on the multi-core. The M1 Air gets 1,748 on the single core and 7,000 607 on the multi-core score. But like I said, it's a simple benchmark. There's really not a risk of this thermal throttling when running Geekbench. So we're gonna load up an even more intensive benchmark this time with Cinebench, and we're gonna run it for 30 minutes straight. So we can see 
if there is any thermal throttling happening on the M2 MacBook Air and also the M1 MacBook Air to see uh, maybe if the M2 throttles down even lower than the performance of what the M1 MacBook Air offers. So as we finish our first round of the Cinebench benchmark, which is a 10 minute long multi-core benchmark, we can see the M2 is scoring above the M1. We're getting 8,266 on this M2 MacBook Air, and that's compared to 6,453 on the M1 Air. So that is quite a big performance jump. But let's go ahead and run it again for another 10 minutes. And now we can actually see that there is thermal throttling on the M2 MacBook Air because the M2 Air now scores lower after 20 minutes, scoring 7,707. That is quite a performance hit, but the good news is, is it's still outperforming the M1, which also did thermal throttle, but just not as much. So the M1 scoring 6,245. Okay, let's run that test one more time, and that will be another 10 minutes of the Cinebench benchmark for the multi-core score. And after we run this again, we can see a little bit more thermal throttling on the M2 chip. So the multi-core after 30 minutes is gonna be 7,386. And then if you compare that to the M1, we got just a little bit of thermal throttling there. Uh, so that's gonna come in at 6,265. Now, I think the takeaway here is, does the M2 chip thermal throttle in the M2 MacBook Air? Yes. Uh, there's no surprise there. This is a fanless design. So there really is no active cooling system cooling off that chip. So if you're doing sustained workloads that are 20 or 30 minutes, uh, you are going to notice a performance impact on this M2 machine. But the important thing to note too, is that the M1 MacBook Air also thermal throttled and it thermal throttled when the initial reviews came out as well. So this isn't new news. If you're, if you're watching this video going, oh, the M2 MacBook Air thermal throttles, it's useless. No, this thing is still performing really well in the CPU department. And the important thing to note here is even after 30 minutes, it is still beating the M1 MacBook Air. Now, the one thing I will note as a potential weakness for the M2 MacBook Air is during these tests, I was kind of putting my finger on the top and the bottom of both MacBook Airs. And I will say that the M2 MacBook Air felt a little hotter than the M1 MacBook Air during this 30 minute benchmark. So it does seem like the M2 chip does heat up a little bit more than the M1. And that's probably why we're seeing the, the throttling impact the score a little bit more than the M1 does. But again, it was more powerful than the M1 pretty significantly throughout this test. So good news. All right, let's get to the bad news. And that would be the disk speed test. So Going into this, there was potential that the disk speed would be slower on the M2 MacBook Air because on the base model 256 gigabyte uh, M2 MacBook Pro, the drives turned out to be slower because Apple was using one 256 gigabyte drive instead of two 128 gigabyte drives so it could write and read to both of them simultaneously like it did on the older design of the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air. So running the disk speed test on the M2 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air was actually faster in the 256 gigabyte tier. So basically the M1 Air is getting about double the speed. It's getting around 2,300 write and around 2,800 read whereas the uh, M2 MacBook Air maxed out at around 1700 write speed. And on the read speed, it would be about 1500 to 1600. So basically we're seeing half the speed on the M2 Air because it is just using one 256 gigabyte drive. And that is unfortunate. That is a downgrade year over year from the last M1 MacBook Air. And the worst part is the M2 MacBook Air costs more money. So it's $200 more and you're getting uh, worse performance with the drive speed. Now, the important thing to note is that this only affects the base model M2 MacBook Air. If you get any of the higher storage tiers, it's gonna have a faster SSD. It's gonna score very similar to the M1 MacBook Air. But if you are getting that base model, that is something to be wary of. We'll have to see if that impacts our performance when we do a, uh, video export later on in the benchmark. But for now, let's test the GPU because the M2 MacBook Air has a new eight core GPU in the base model where the old M1 Air only had a seven core GPU. So for this test, I ran the Aztec Ruins off-screen 
benchmark at 4K, and we can see the M2 MacBook Air beats out the M1 MacBook Air. So it's gonna get 39 FPS average with an overall 2,560 frames. The M1 MacBook Air gets 31 FPS average with 2,027 frames total. All right, so we can see the M2 MacBook Air in almost all areas besides the disk speed test is getting really nice scores when you compare it against the base model M1 Air. But benchmarks are just benchmarks. Uh, a lot of these components have to work together. And when you have the CPU, the GPU, and the disk speed all working together, how much faster is the M2 MacBook Air when you compare it against the M1 MacBook Air? Well, uh, I'm a video editor, so I do a lot of video exports. So let's go into Final Cut where it is actually a pretty good uh, combination of all of these factors, CPU, uh, GPU for rendering, and then uh, even exporting, you're gonna run into disk speed. So I just did a very simple 10 minute 4K clip export. Uh, I'm gonna do it twice, once with exporting to H.264, and then another test exporting to ProRes. So uh, the first test I did with H.264, and I was a little disappointed here because as you can see, as we go through this test, uh, initially, and I did this test twice just to make sure, there was a little bit of lag on the M2 MacBook Air when I clicked the export. And I think that might have something to do with the lower uh, disk speed. And as we finish out this export, we can also see that the M2 MacBook Air was actually slower. So the M1 finished this export in five minutes and three seconds. The base model M2 Air finished in five minutes and eight seconds. Now again, there was a little bit of kind of lag, a little bit of spinning beach ball when I did that initial click. Maybe that's just a, a minute error, but either way, these things are so close with each other that I think the real takeaway here is that there's just not a speed improvement on the M2 and maybe even just a tiny little bit of a uh, speed decrease, but I think it's well within the margin of error that maybe if I ran these tests, if I restarted these machines, maybe they'd come out the same. But uh, there's also the ProRes export test. Now, the M2 chip has a dedicated ProRes engine, so I'm expecting better results here. And uh, as we run this test with the ProRes footage, I am seeing that. So the M2 MacBook Air finishes out way ahead of the M1 this time, finishing in three minutes and 37 seconds whereas the M1 MacBook Air finishes out that export about a minute later at four minutes and 52 seconds. So that's why it's important to kind of test these things. Not everything is going to operate the same. And depending on your workloads, you might see a bigger speed increase with the M2 MacBook Air like we saw when you're dealing with ProRes footage, or you might not see a speed increase at all, or maybe even a speed decrease if your performance is heavily reliant on faster transfer uh, or read or write speeds with the disk drive. All right, so how can I sum this up? Because uh, we saw mixed results with these benchmarks. Um, I think the big takeaway here is that as much as I really like this base model machine, and I'm gonna continue to test it, uh, there are problems to be made aware of. I know the disk speed won't impact everyone, but it's an unfortunate downgrade. It makes me really question if people should go for this base model. This is a $1,200 laptop. We should expect top tier performance out of this thing. And it seems like everything here, uh, besides the disk speed is firing on all cylinders. CPU performance is good, uh, GPU performance is good, and it's doing that all in a very thin fanless design. But when you face a downgrade in something that was standard on the older model, which is about two years old at this point, that is cause for concern. And it makes me hesitant to recommend the 256 gigabyte model, um, unless you're just a very basic user and you're not utilizing uh, your disk speed as much. But the fact that these come with eight gigabytes of memory and, uh, that is probably when you're probably going to utilize memory swap more because you have such little memory, the faster disk speed probably will make uh, a noticeable improvement if you're constantly maxing out that eight gigabytes of memory, which I think is fair to say on, on these base models. So listen, I think 256 gigabytes of storage is pretty low anyway, just for internal drive space. So I think I would probably recommend most people step up to the 512 gigabyte drive and maybe 
uh, that would be the only upgrade. That would be a $200 more, and then maybe you could just uh, even just keep the eight core GPU if, if GPU performance isn't a problem for you. But yeah, other than the disk speed, so far I am really liking this laptop uh, form factor, and I still wanna run more tests on the base model, and I also have a 512 gigabyte model that I want to test as well to see if maybe we can overcome some of those performance hitches that we saw in this video. But yeah, so far that's the first video on the M2 MacBook Air. Got a lot more coming with a lot more tests, so uh, let me know in the comments below what kind of tests would you like to see on this M2 MacBook Air, and what other questions do you want answered for a different video and in my full review. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna buy the M2 MacBook Air, I still think it's a great machine. I really love the redesign on this. Uh, check out my affiliate links in the description below. I'll have uh, links there where you can buy the M2 Air and it does help out the channel if you do buy it through one of those links. And yeah, thank you again for watching. I'll probably see you very soon. And uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Take care. See you in the next one. I gotta go edit this now. You know, I, I don't got all time for the formalities. We don't got time for formalities when we got this new M2 MacBook. Look at that blue. Look at that blue. You want the blue. It is fingerprinty though. Just just fair warning. But it's nice.